Yes, we are an update ahead on Pixel phones, but One UI 8 based upon Android 16 is available far and wide for Samsung Galaxy devices. Here are a few things that we think you'll love and will love getting to grips with. Before then though, we are well on the road to 400K subscribers here on the channel. So join that caravan of love and hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you along for the ride. Cheers. So first and foremost, we have some great lock screen clock options. These get creative and have a much needed upgrade here in One UI 8, as you can now choose a shifting clock style that is intelligently able to move around your screen to avoid blocking key parts of your wallpaper if there are any in it. So for instance, if you use a personal photo, like a snap of your dog or your children, for instance, then the clock itself can automatically reposition so that it doesn't block the main subject. It's not as extensive as what you can see in iOS 26, but I do think this is still a lovely touch. And you're probably wondering why is this nice? Well, seriously, I could complain all day about clumsy lock screen elements, but I do think this tiny visual enhancement adds both elegance and a dose of practicality thrown in. It's a massive win as far as I'm concerned. Samsung has always also been about personalization and customization and the brand new dynamic wallpaper feature definitely takes it to another level here. We've seen similar stuff from Google, Google's Material U, but this version feels distinctly like it has that Samsung polish added. The wallpaper is now able to subtly change the color tone throughout the day, so it'll be brighter in the morning, warmer and calmer as the evening hits, which I really do like. And I think this is one of the things that when night falls, your wallpaper automatically darkening to reduce eye strain, I think is a big win for our eyes and makes the whole experience feel a little bit more naturally adaptive. This is one of those quality of life updates that makes your phone also feel a little bit more alive, more context aware of what you're doing. And that said, it's not exactly a life changing feature, but I do think it's one of those another nice to haves. And let's be honest, the now brief feature ain't all that, even though it may be was touted as such in Samsung's marketing campaigns for Galaxy devices. And as a Galaxy S25 Ultra user on and off over the past nearly a year that this phone's been available, I'll be honest, I've more or less ignored it altogether. And I'm sure tons of other Samsung fans out there watching this have as well. In One UI 8 though, Samsung is trying to give it a little bit more purpose. So under the content to include section, which is available across the board, you'll find new options like parking spot reminders. So you'll never lose track of where you've parked your car. But I actually really love the new YouTube integration as it gives you quick updates for content and content recommendations. And you'd be wondering why this is a nice change. Well, while minor on paper, it actually turns an hour brief into a genuinely or a, an extra helpful hub for daily convenience. So especially those of you out there who commute or do large frequent trips to garages, parking lots, whatever you want to call them, it means you can find your car a little bit easier. Plus again, YouTube out there is a great start as it's really nice to see more apps and services added into now brief as it could be a killer way to surface interesting content. And I want to see Samsung keep developing this. Hopefully we'll get better over time. Maybe we'll get Netflix, maybe we'll get Disney Plus, all that kind of jazz thrown into a section, which yeah, feels like it should be more automated than it already is. Multitasking is also where Samsung phones, particularly the Fold series, truly, truly shine. And One UI 8 makes it even better than it has been before. In this update, you can actually resize split screen applications with even more flexibility, which allows you to use ratio, extreme ratios like 90-10 or 80-20 splits beyond that old balanced, I'd say 70-30 or 50-50 splits. What's even better here is that when you minimize one of the applications, the split screen panel doesn't completely disappear at those extreme settings. So it's docked and it's ready there for you for quick access. And you're probably wondering why this is nice and why you'd want to use this. So for anyone using a foldable device, this has big productivity benefits giving you that greater little extra control over your screen real estate, but it does make switching between multitasking setups smoother and more intuitive. So on smaller screens, like on older devices and devices that maybe don't have quite as much screen real estate available to them, it's great to be able to keep things running simultaneously, but not lose out on functionality. So for instance, if you're like me and you're in the Pokemon Center queue time after time, if you know, you know, you can use this without taking up all of your screen and it keeps it active in the background, which I think is great for real, real time multitasking. And there's another quality of life improvement here for mobile photographers within the camera application that I think a lot of you will probably love. Previously, swiping up in the camera application switched between the front and rear cameras. Now you can change that gesture under the camera settings to open quick controls. A swipe now will bring up a mini control panel to quickly toggle things like a timer, the resolution settings, the megapixel mode, and other in-camera settings, which is always really, really nice to have. This just means you'll have fewer taps, faster access when you're trying to capture that perfect moment, which is something we've really wanted for ages. I do think it's about time Samsung started to make this easier to use, and it's a great step forward for the camera experience on Samsung phones. 
If, like me, your Screenshots album is an absolute chaotic mess, then I think you're going to love this change in One UI 8, as it automatically categorizes your screenshots into logical groups. Things like boarding passes, shopping lists, locations of where you've taken these. This makes it infinitely easier to find what you're after or what you're looking for within a really chaotic part of your phone. And I think it's a really small, very practical organizational improvement for everyday users out there that will save you from endless scrolling. Yes, it isn't as good as pixel screenshots, but I do think, again, it is a start and that's all we ask for with these updates. Another upgrade here to the routines feature, which has been around for a little while now. I think it was Bixby routines previously. Under the discover tab here, Samsung has added pre-made suggested routines that you can use as templates. Think automatically enabling do not disturb during bedtime or turning on power saving mode when your battery hits 20%. There are also new then actions, which allow for more complex automation change. You're probably wondering why this is nice. Well, this update puts One UI's automation capabilities a lot closer to what say iOS has with the shortcuts application and Google Assistant routines have, but with a uniquely Samsung spin. So play around with this, get into it deeply. I'm not the person to explain this fully as I don't really use routines as much as I should. But yeah, this could be a really powerful feature that really enhances your time with a Samsung phone. Samsung's file manager or the default file manager, the My Files application, has also seen a usability boost here in One UI 8, which I really, really like and I think is always welcome here. The new layout actually presents new categories a lot more clearly and within the download section, you can now filter files by source. For instance, you've downloaded it from Chrome, you've downloaded it from Google Drive or even your email. And I think this is a really simple change that makes it, like the screenshots functionality, much easier to locate files you've downloaded across those different applications. Again, no more endless scrolling trying to find that one document that you downloaded six months ago. It's right there, tap documents, and you get what you need to right with a, with a button punch, as it were. I have to say, Samsung's weather widget has always been a really solid functional home screen widget that I've used across every Samsung phone I've ever owned. But with One UI 8, it finally looks as good as it, well, as good as it feels. The animations are a lot more smoother, they're richer and more colorful, and actually turning a, what is ordinarily a mundane weather check, check application into a little bit more of a visual treat for your home screen and something you want to look at. You're probably wondering, is this a groundbreaking feature? No, it isn't, but it totally reflects Samsung's ongoing focus on the aesthetic refinement and I really appreciate the effort that they've put into this. As, as I say, One UI 7 was a really, really big update that I've absolutely loved and I like to see Samsung take it a step further and I want to see them do it again with One UI 9 in future as well. Quick Share has also seen a number of updates over the years since it was introduced as Nearby Share, but in One UI 8, it gets that much needed polish and redesign. This has also been updated and uh, improved across other devices out there with the Play Services update. So initially what you'll now see are separate send and receive tabs. It's a much cleaner layout. It's more flexible with the attachment option. You can select photos, videos, documents, and other files simultaneously, preview them all at once in a little screen and easily hit that send button and get them to the person that you wanna send them to or the device that you wanna send them to. It's just much more intuitive out the gate and it's faster to use, which is exactly what you want when you're sharing multiple file types on the go. I think good on Samsung on the cleanup and it's really good to see that this is available wider on Android as well. As yeah, creates cohesion, especially when you switch from phone to phone. I think one of the best workflow changes though in One UI 8 is the tighter integration between calendars and the reminders applications. You can now create both events and reminders from within that same interface, which is a massive time saver. Plus, the reminders appear directly in your calendar view and you can just simply drag and drop them around to different dates, which is great as it just means you can effectively, well, yeah, automate your diary, change things on a whim when you need to. The standard reminders app also gets a facelift on top of this which adds category breakdowns and a new toolbar for adding checklists, locations, dates, and even photos. I think this is a streamlined approach that makes managing your schedule and those to-do lists simpler, a lot more visual, especially for people out there who are visual people. It's just really, really easy for you to create those detailed reminders. For example, I've been using this for a trip that I'm, that's upcoming currently, so I can check the, create checklists for the things I need to put in my suitcase. Plus, I can put an image of the bag that I'm gonna use, or the things that I plan to buy before I go. I think it's really practical, highly customizable, and something that, yeah, I wanna see more people do that out across Android with their own applications that do similar features to this. So those are a few things that we have really loved so far when we've been using One UI over the past four to five weeks since it started rolling out for devices that were released in the last year. I think it was never gonna be a big update. We knew that ahead of time. It's not about dramatic over the top redesigns. Luckily, there are no clear UI elements, at least yet, yep. Yeah. That's just that iOS effect in action across other areas of Android. But like Google and previous Android updates, I do think like 
One UI 8 and Android 16 for Samsung phones is a refinement release. It's about integration, quality of life upgrades. Samsung does continue to polish its interface to make it more adaptive and a lot more user centric, which is more than they've probably done in the last few years. I do think for me though, the real strength of One UI is that it manages to balance a ton of features with simplicity, offering extra deep customization without really overwhelming you like it should. If you want to have that extra customization, you can use a good luck app as, as well, which is another app in and of itself that I think we probably need to make a video. If you haven't received this update yet on your phone, it should be rolling out quite widely. As, as I say, it's going out to all of Samsung's Galaxy lineup in waves and should be available for most phones that they've produced in the last three to four years if they are still supported. I want to ask you though, what are you loving or loathing in this update? Did Samsung miss something or they messed something up? Yeah, let me know down in the comment sections below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. It's a little bit later dive into some things that we've really enjoyed in One UI 8, but yeah. Thanks for watching and as always, I'll speak to you later.